Welcome to ECA Limu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have been discussing thermal conductivity in solids. But since we said physics is the study of matter, matter in this case, it means solids, liquids, and gases, and its relation to energy, we are also obliged to discuss thermal conductivity in liquids and then thermal conductivity in gases. So since we have discussed in solids, then now we are going to discuss thermal conductivity in liquids and thermal conductivity in gases. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain thermal conductivity in liquids and then explain why liquids are poor conductors of heat, then explain thermal conductivity in gases, then finally explain why gases are poor conductors of heat. Now, when we are going to discuss thermal conductivity in liquids, we are going to realize that generally liquids are poor conductors of heat. However, some liquids, as we are going to discuss later, like mercury and some electrolytes, these are so solutions of salts, they are going to be better conductors of heat, but generally most liquids are poor conductors of heat. But why are they poor conductors of heat? Remember, when we were discussing particulate nature of matter, we said liquids have a structure whose particles are slightly far away from each other, there is a, some intermolecular distance between the particles and the intermolecular force is very weak. And when we were discussing, these are the particles of liquids, liquid particles. And then when we were discussing mo um, modes, not even modes, but mechanisms, mechanisms of heat transfer, mechanisms of heat conduction, conduction, we said it can only take place in two ways, either vibration of atoms or movement of free electrons. Now, in liquids, we said particles of liquid does not vibrate because they move, they undergo Brownian motion. So in this case, we will not have vibration of atoms in liquids. Then movement of free electrons, electrons are very few, in liquids or in the atoms of liquids. So in this case, the only way liquids can conduct heat is through movement of the particles as whole. This particle will move here. It will bring heat from this point to this point. Then when the, 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 the second particle gets the heat, it will also move to the third particle. So this movement will be very slow and therefore the conduction of heat in liquids since they depend on the movement of particles as whole, will be slower than in solids. However, for electrolytes, when we talk about electrolytes, these are solutions. For electrolytes, electrolytes, this when you dissolve a salt inside a, a liquid, like in this case, if we have water, water particles are like that. Then remember, when we were discussing particular nature of matter, we said, if you dissolve a solid inside a solution, then the, 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 the solid will occupy the space between the particles. Now, if you have an electrolyte, it means it is a liquid which had large intermolecular spaces. Then you introduced a solid which dissolved and it filled the space between the particles. So in this case, this is a solution which we all call electrolyte. Electrolyte. So in this case, if you introduce heat at this point here, since the particles are now close, the particles of the salt and the particles of the liquid, these particles now, since they are close, they will vibrate. They are close, they are touching each other. Now they will vibrate and they conduct heat. So in this case, electrolytes will be better conductors of heat than other liquids. Then now we have mercury, but what you should note about mercury Mercury is a metal, it only exists in liquid state at room temperature. So if you cool it below room temperature, it will be in solid state. So since mercury is a metal and the metals have free electrons, 
clear electrons and then the particles of metals are vibrating so the particles of uh, mercury they are vibrating they are in touch with each, with each other so in this case makes mercury to conduct heat just like good conductors of heat now what experiment can we perform to demonstrate that liquids are generally poor conductors of heat to demonstrate that liquids are generally poor conductors of heat we consider water in a boiling tube you can see on the screen we have water you put water in a boiling tube and in a slanting position you have to slant this boiling tube like that and then you take ice ice is water in, in solid state you tie the or you rub the ice with a wire goose now the reason why we tie ice with a wire goose is to make it sink remember when we were discussing thermal expansion we said we have what we call anomalous expansion of water or the abnormal expansion of water where it contracts when you heat from zero to four degrees celsius and it expands when you cool from four to zero degrees celsius so it means when ice is at zero degrees celsius it means it has the maximum volume since it expands from four to zero maximum volume means from the equation of density is equal to mass over volume if volume is high density is very slow water which is at uh, at four degrees celsius it has a very small volume then it means density is maximum so in this case ice if you put it without a wire goes it will float because of its low density so we tie a wire goes so that it can sink into this or into the bottom of this boiling tube then now what you do you heat at the top you heat at this end here the one that i've marked with red that is where you heat and then now you will test will heat flow from the top here to where ice is and now to see if heat has flown from the top to the bottom here we observe if the ice will melt or not so and the reason why we heat at the top here is to avoid any possible heat transfer by convection remember convection current takes place from down upwards we are going to discuss it later but remember the reason why we heat up here is to ensure that there's no heat transfer by convection currents so when we heat at the top here what we will observe is that the water at the top this water at the top here the water at the top will boil this water will boil this water will boil but the ice will remain unmelted this ice will remain unmelted the water will boil but the ice will remain unmelted now what does that mean it means if when you heat up here the heat which will be supplied to this glass will cause this water which is at the top to be heated and this water does not conduct any heat it does not conduct any heat into this ice that is why ice cannot melt however it has also communicated something glass is a solid this glass is in contact with this ice at the bottom but the ice cannot also melt so it means also glass is a poor conductor of heat so in this case to investigate that liquids are poor conductors of heat you put ice at the bottom of the uh, of the boiling tube containing uh, water then this ice you tie it using a wire goes so that it can sink and then you heat at the top the reason why you heat at the top is to make sure that there's no convectional current which will make the heat to move upwards remember if you heat at the bottom here and you put ice at the top heat will reach the ice through convection current so we put at the bottom because convection current cannot move downwards then when we heat we will observe that the water will boil but the ice will remain unmelted that means water is a poor conductor of heat if it was good it could have made the, this ice to melt by conducting the heat since the ice does not melt water is a poor conductor of heat and also since ice does not melt the glass where you are heating up here is a poor conductor of heat since it has not conducted any heat into this ice so be very keen with this experiment because we're going to perform almost a similar experiment but we're going to heat down here 
and then we are going to put eyes at the top when we are going to discuss convectional current. So do all liquids conduct heat at the same rate? No. For us to investigate this, we are going to consider two beakers. Beaker one containing mercury and then beaker two containing water. Then we connect this uh, beaker one containing mercury with a metal rod. This metal rod is of the same material. This metal rod is of the same material all through. It is the same material, so it's going to conduct heat with the same or at the same rate. So, and the distance of this uh, covered by this metal rod is the same also from this side where we are heating to this point here. It is the same as from here to this point here. And now, if we are going to heat at the middle here, we are going to heat at the center so that the distance is the same. What we will realize? The ice which is connected to the beaker containing mercury, this wax, will melt, melt fast. Then the wax on the walls of the water will not melt easily. It will not melt easily. This one melts faster. In fact, it will melt after a very short time. Now, the reason why the wax which is attached to mercury beaker melts very fast is because mercury, remember we said it's a metal, but it exists as a liquid at room temperature. So when the heat is received by, from this metal rod, it will get conducted very fast. It will get conducted very fast into the walls of this beaker, and then it will cause the ice or the, the wax to melt. But since water is a poor conductor, it will take long for this uh, wax to melt, because when this water receives the heat, it will take a long time for it to conduct the heat to the walls of the container. Then it will take long for this wax to melt. So in this case, it means different liquids conduct heat at different rates. Mercury will conduct faster than water. Then if you have another liquid like water and the kerosene, one of it will conduct faster than the other. So the last part of this lesson and in general conduction, we are going to determine the heat conductivity in gases. And what we are going to realize is that gases are generally poor, poor conductors of heat. Remember, from particular nature of matter, we said the particles of gases are very far away from each other. These are particles of gases. And for heat to be conducted, there must be vibration of atoms or movement of erections. Now, since these particles cannot vibrate, it means they must move to conduct heat from one point to the other part. Now, since the distance between them is very long, so it will take a very long time for these particles to conduct heat. So in this case, it makes them very poor conductors of heat. And if you want to perform an experiment in the lab to investigate this, what you do, you take a matchstick and then you put it inside the innermost part of a non-luminous flame. Remember, non-luminous flame from your chemistry. The innermost zone is called a almost colorless zone, and almost colorless zone is contains unburnt gases. So there we have a gas which we are going to investigate its thermal conductivity. So if you put a matchstick there you will realize that the flame will be burning. And remember, an aluminous flame is the one of the hottest flames. It will be burning, but the matchstick will not be ignited. This means the heat which is just adjacent here, this heat which is just adjacent here, in the second uh, layer, which is uh, greenish blue zone, it cannot be conducted inside into this matchstick to make it ignite. So this means, Gases are very poor conductors of heat. That marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss convection in liquids and convection current in gases.